America who sell and service Ford cars and Ford trucks present Burr Tilstrom, creator of Kukla, Ollie, and all the Kuklapolitan players with Fran Allison in Kukla, Fran, and Ollie. your hair to be nice and wonderfully free of, of any, uh, any of this water now. I want to get careful now. Oh, be careful. Now, come back here. Uh, the, no, the celluloid duck will be all right. Now, come back. Oh, you stay right there. Of all these extra ones, I haven't had a chance to buy you one yet. Well, no, it's not too big. Just hope to help them out. Take good care of it. Are you ashamed of yourself? Let me stop it. I hope you're going to brush your hair. Now it's going to be all right. Don't pour. I've got some soft little brush now. I want you to have lovely hair like your cousin Oliver. Get it all fluffy and soft. You have such pretty hair. Prettiest hair I ever saw. Oh, yes, it is. It's very beautiful. And I always keep it lovely. That's why Ali has such lovely hair. Because he always brushes it and combs it. He's always taking such good care of it. And you want it, too. Always brush it and keep it neat and nice. You need some new ribbons on there. No, you've chewed those enough now. See how you look. They're lovely. Show everybody. Does she look nice, Jack? Very lovely, cousin. Oh, she looks like that. 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 Oh, she looks like that.
That's right, Jim. Yeah, how about that? Mm -hmm. What'd she say? She's asking me how I've been. Is that what you're asking? I ain't gonna look on your shoes. You ain't gonna look at You ain't gonna look at Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Laura, she must stay away from backstage now. I want you to talk English, not Chewy talk. Now hold there a minute. I've got a surprise for you. No, I don't need any Dolores. No, uh, Dolores, please. Well, all right. Who squeezed the bulb? Never mind, you can't do it. It's a little too tight for you. No, Dolores, now, please, 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 now. Why don't you take a little nap? A what? A story? Oh, yeah, I'll tell you a story. Once upon a time, Many years ago, there lived in a there lived in a, a little house a lady and um, her little girl uh, who was known as Little Red Riding Hood. Yeah, 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 boy. Well, I know I told you, but I thought you'd like to hear it again. Yeah, boy. Okay, I'll take another one. Once upon a time, a long time ago, there lived in a. There lived in a house three bears. There was a papa bear, a mama bear, and... Yeah! Did you like that story? It bores you? What? Don't chew my ear now. Like whose story? Once upon a time, once upon a time, there was a dragon. And, uh, no, no. And his name was, no, it's not about you. And his name was Oliver. And he lived, he lived in, in Vermont. And um, when he was a little boy, he used to play outside and, uh, and run. And they had a farm up there, and, and, and it was in the mountains. And he used to go skiing in the wintertime. And he used to go hiking in the summertime. And then he lived with his mama and his daddy him in the, the place in Vermont. And what was that? The Dragon Retreat. You know, get ahead of me. And <clears throat> then he went to Dragon Prep. And, and then after he went to Dragon Prep, he uh, started to do some acting. Well, as a matter of fact, at first he went into television engineering. And then he got a chance on a television show uh, with a young man, quite a good-looking young star. <coughs> Who's he sell? Cooper. <laughs> no, no. And so... They became very good friends. And that was a long, long time ago. Way once upon a time, a long time ago. And they became very good friends. And so they started to do television shows together. And, oh, they produced wonderful, wonderful shows. And pretty soon, one day, their big chance came, and they got a sponsor. Well, it wasn't Ford then. It was later. Ford came in a little later. But uh, they got a sponsor and they got on the show. And then they, when they got on the show that day, they met the most beautiful girl in all the world. Ah! Ah! That's right. Sure, you know, don't you? They were real. And so they became fast friends, the three of them, and they lived happily ever after. How's that? 
bad days. Sometimes Ollie does kind of, you know, irritate just a little bit, but don't you think that maybe once in a while you might irritate a little bit? <laughs> well, sometimes you might just a little bit. We all get a little tired sometimes, but your cousin Oliver Dragon is one of the very finest people I've ever known and one of the very finest dragons I've ever known in all my life. He's a very fine fellow and he's one of my best friends and Believe me, you have a lot to live up to, Dolores. You have a lot to live up to, and I just hope that you'll follow his example. Well, no, not that way. Just in all the fine things he does in his loyalty, he's very sincere, and, and he's a very, very fine fellow. Even though he makes mistakes, but don't we all? Oh, you do too sometimes. You will when you get older. You never make, make mistakes when you're little like you are. <laughs> Everything you do is cute, but... When you get older, somehow things aren't quite as cute. They're the same tricks. You have to learn new ones. And they wear out, too. <laughs> oh, you wouldn't understand, anyway. You'll find out soon enough. <laughs> Jack has tricks, too. <laughs> yeah, he's a nice fellow. He's a nice fellow. He's going to teach you piano when you're a little bit older. No, no. Classical music. Yeah. Now, you have to take classical music first, and maybe later he'll play popular music for you and teach you that. Now, Dolores, I told you your story. You promised Fran that you'd go to sleep early every night. You know which will feed you your supper. You just go down. All right. Come on now. What will Fran think? Good night, sweetheart. Go to bed now. I'm going to take this damp towel off you. Go on. Kind of quiet today, Jack. I know that. After the scene yesterday, <coughs> it's kind of good. A little too upsetting for me. I'm certainly glad it worked out all right, though, for Bob's scene music. But pretty upsetting for me, having all that trouble and everything. Hi, Cook. Hi. Hey, what were you doing up here? Oh, I was, I was working. Took, gave Dolores her bath tonight and sent her downstairs to go to bed. <laughs> That's wonderful of you. Did you tell her a story tonight? I told her a story. What kind? Oh, I told her a story about a fellow I know. Who, who's that? Well, it's a true story. Who's the fellow? Who's the fellow? Tell me who the fellow was. Jack Fascinato? No. Linwood? No. Who could it be? Well, I told her a story about a fellow I know by the name of, uh, his initials are O.J.D. O.J.D. Ogilvy, Jeremiah. Dolsby. No. What's his first name? Oliver. Mm. Oliver Jericho Dumbbell. No. No. Can't you guess? Ah. Uh, me! Yeah! <laughs> what were you telling? Well, I was talking about when you were a little dragon. I didn't I didn't know you then. How do you know? Well, I I just this morning I was going across some of the Scrapbooks. And You're uh, reminiscing? What? Reminiscing? No, reminiscing. That's what I said. Well, anyway, I was going through the scrapbooks that your mother sent down, you know. And I saw pictures of how when you were young, and I remember you from a long time. We're, we're pretty old friends, don't you think? Oh, yes, you're, you're practically the oldest friend in the entire world, except for my family. And I'm not sure whether you can call them friends or not. Aren't you on friendly terms with your family? Yes, but I mean, they're relatives. It's different. You know, I was thinking, I told Dolores about, well, in the, in the summertime, I used to go hiking, and did you have a real farm there in Vermont? Well, it was sort of, yeah, it was kind of a farm. Of course, it wasn't the real, you know, we had small, small farming, 
uh, uh, places because there were so many hills around there we couldn't. Still, we had. I remember we had. Oh, I can see it now. We had a. We had cornfields, and you know when I first came, when I first left home, and I I, I remember when I when I first went to Dragon Prep, and right after that, and I went to the city. I, I used to sit around and I listen. Long ago in the twilight, my fancy would stray over the hilltops and far, far away. I dreamed of the city, a life full and gay. But now I'm so homesick by night and by day. I remember the corn in the wind softly sighing and the swing beneath the chestnut tree I remember my school friends happy days swiftly fly and my Still waiting for me. The old harvest moon rising over the city discovers me there and regards me with pity while sad of heart I My first love and the last time she kissed me by the golden corn. that homesick? No, not really. It's just a song. What do you mean? Well, I get carried away about it. Were there really those cornfields? And were there really, was there really a girl that kissed you for the last time? No, no girl ever kissed me for the last time. Oh, but I do get a little nostalgic, Kupa, thinking of it. I was, I was getting that way today, too, myself, kind of. Thought of our first days in television and everything. I was just telling... I was telling Dolores, you know, I was thinking way back when we first started. Remember back there? Yeah, it wasn't so long ago, but it seems like 20 years. Heaven forbid. Well, it's only about three and a half years that we really started. Remember when we first met Fran? Yes, remember how great it was. Oh, goodness sakes, both of us leaped, leaped at the chance to do a show. Well, especially because it was sponsored. Yes, all those days before sponsors. Lots of people don't know that there was television before sponsors. They should have been with us. Yes, those were the rough days. But they were the fun days, too. That gay, bohemian life, <laughs> living out of the trunk. We never lived out of a trunk. We did pretty well. Yeah, but it sounds better that way. Let's not make a story out of it. Well, it was a pretty good story, Coop. Remember? Remember that first day when we came in? I can't even remember the show. You can or can't? I can. Well, what was it? Well, I we did a we did a special pageant about courtesy or something. I can just remember that. And Fran came on the show, and um, my goodness, that was in the days when we did a whole hour every day. Gee, that's where I got my gray hair. So you don't have it. Oh, that sounds good too. And I have some illusions left. The public's got to think I'm a star now. The public's got to think that I have gray hairs that I'm. Great to tragic and worry and everything that our life is very complicated and that we are very mysterious and live in a great peak way up there at the top. That's what we must let the public think. I have news for you. What? They see you every night for a half hour. They know you don't live way up there. You live down here. 
do you mean? Well, that, that's kind of silly. You're a friend. Everybody knows you. And they know you're not a, you know, not a real star. I am so a real star. Well, I mean, not a star like you're not mysterious. I could be. I could wear a mask or dark glasses and a great cape and go out into the wind. Should I do that? Well, if you go out into the wind, probably nobody will see you. The cape will fly across your face. That, if you want to be that mysterious, it's all right with me, but it's not commercial. What do you mean? Well, if you want to go out and have people see you, then you stop and talk and visit with them. That's more fun. I suppose it is. Well, let's go back to reminiscing. I like to reminisce. It makes me feel so kind of mellow and kind of... It makes me feel kind of like a, ooh, a great sage. Great sage? Yes, that's what I'd like to be, a great sage someday giving out little pearls of wisdom here and there to young people who come up to ask for advice. If you keep on going like this, you may never live to be old. Oh, but please. <laughs> the Dragon family is a very old family. You know what we should do right now? What? We should talk about one of our sponsors. Oh, that's very easy. I like all of our sponsors. I do, too. You know, someone asked me just the other day, they said, how in the world, I mean, how do you go about preparing your commercial? What did you do? I laughed. <laughs> well, what'd you laugh for? Well, we'll prepare, gracious sake. How can you, you know, I don't prepare about things like that. Like when I talk about the 51 Ford, I just, I just talk about it because I, I have a 51 Ford. Anybody who has a 51 Ford just talks about it. It's natural. You, it's just that way. You know, the Ford family is a Ford family. That's all. You just sort of belong. Well, why don't we talk about it now? That would suit to me. Would you like to get a, one of our 51 Fords out of the garage? All right. We just pretend we have a garage. We don't really. Who's destroying illusions? Gee, <laughs> I saw this. Cook, I saw this at the automobile show here in Chicago. Oh, isn't that wonderful? I didn't know you were down there. Sure, I was down there. I never missed the automobile show. Oh, this is a little model I thought you just had. Oh, you know, do you, you know that the 43rd Annual Automobile Show here in Chicago is the uh, largest in the world? I didn't know that. Well, you should just keep your eyes open. Oh, I did. Keep your ears open, too. I do. Oh, okay, then you should hear it. Oh, look. Uh, you know, when I, oh, all those cars there at the automobile show, but I could spot that 51 Ford uh, practically clear across the International Amphitheater, which is a quite, a, quite a big space, let me remind you. Because I looked at that front, oh, that beautiful front with a twin spinner radio grill. The uh, radiator grill. Here it is, twin spinner. See, completely restyled, you know, and it gives the front end a wider and a lower and a more massive appearance. Don't you think? Yes, I do. I'm just wondering what you're gonna, what else you're going to say. Oh, I, I can talk for hours if you'd like me to. Well, go ahead and see. Well, well, for instance, a little parking lamp here. And see, <laughs> parking lamp. Look, <laughs> they're restyled too, and they're circular lamps, you know, and they harmonize with the twin spinners here, you see? It makes a balanced design. Now, you may not notice these little things. You may just look at the 51 Ford and say, oh boy, that's a beautiful car. Wow, 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 yeah, I'd like to have a 51 Ford. But these are the little things that make it so beautiful. The balanced design, very important. And then, of course, these bumpers, they're all newly styled. Much more rugged, too. Yes, they are. They, this wrap around here at the end, it, it uh, makes for greater protection. Yeah, that's true, very. And oh, and I love, I love the little, the little modernistic design in the hood ornaments, you know? The little, uh, has a kind of symbolic of the 51 Ford's, uh, look ahead, exterior styling. Yeah, it is. And then the interiors. Wow. Well, anybody knows who's been out the automobile show and, and looked inside. It, why, well, anybody who's seen the 51 Ford, just look inside. You really should get a good close look, though. It's really wonderful to, just to get inside and sit down and, Look around. Oh, it's so beautiful. Look at those Ford Craft fabrics. They're upholstered in the highest quality, exclusive Ford Craft fabrics, and distinctive modern patterns in keeping with the high standards set for Ford Luxury Lounge interior styling. I said it, and I'm glad. Mm. Oh, let's not let this up here in the light too long. No, sir. Just let them have just a little taste of it. If they want to see it in person, they can go down to the automobile show in Chicago or at their Ford dealers and wherever they live. Well, how was that? I think you did pretty well. I have always do pretty well. Well, not always. Sometimes you don't do so well. You know, the whole thing is kind of exciting. What? Uh, well, I mean, like, um, 
television's exciting to me. Phil? Oh, after all these years, I think it's more exciting than it ever was. Remember when I used to... Remember when... Oh, <laughs> remember when the... Way back when, when we used to put the camera together with uh, scotch tape and uh, bobby pins? Yeah, I remember that. Remember sometimes I would give a lecture on television? Yeah, I remember that. It's a great thing, isn't it? You really still think so? Oh, sure, I think it's a great thing. Golly, we wouldn't be here if I went to television. Where would we be? Who knows where we'd be? You know, I feel, Cooper, I feel way down deep inside of me that I would like to, I would like very much to pay a tribute to television. You would? Or would you rather have me sing a song? You're putting me on the spot, I don't know. Jackson, what do you vote for? I like the tribute idea. You like the tribute? I really do, Ollie. You do such a great job, Ollie. You're prejudiced. He's loud. That's true. Besides, I sang the other day. You can sing. I will. I'll just do this. This is a great song. It was written by Jack Fashionato uh, to, uh, to uh, commemorate <clears throat> the advent of television into the 20th century. <laughs> for the future. Buy Ford. Here is a car that combines long life economy with lasting luxury and driving ease. It's the 1951 Ford with 43 new look ahead features. Test drive the 1951 Ford. You'll agree, you can pay more, but you can't buy better. The musical director of Kukla, Fran and Ollie is Jack Fascinato. The producer is Beulah Zachary, the director, Louis Gomovitz, and the costume designer, Joseph Lockwood. And this is Bert Tilstrom. Mr. Dragon and I thank you. Good night. Remember to visit your friendly Ford dealer. We think you'll agree with him. You can pay more, but you can't buy better. Kukla, Fran, and Ollie came to you from Chicago. NBC Television.